Welcome back to 200 days on one block Minecraft. In the first 100 days, we turned one block into this massive island. And in this video, we turned the entire island into a castle. And we've gained over 300,000 subscribers in only two weeks with only two videos. And we can actually become the fastest growing YouTube channel if more than 2.2% of you guys subscribed. Come on guys, really? 2.2%? I can almost count higher than that. So together, let's take over 2021 on YouTube and all you have to do is subscribe and i hope you got your snacks ready because here is my 200 days on one block minecraft welcome back to day 101 right where we left off of the first thing i did was i saw a cat drowning in my collection system so i did what any firefighter would do and i saved the cat from drowning because we all know cats hate water i broke the blocks and let him free i then looked down to introduce myself to the cat and there were no signs of him and i was really worried i thought he ran off the edge and then I found him just chilling on a little ledge like what cats love to do. I swear cats just love risking their life. Then I said hi to all my animals and I really need to do something about all these cows. And I don't, this guy is just, he's just there. I don't know what he's doing. He's lost. Then I said hi to my starving polar bear and I met with a iron golem. And man, that unibar always gets me. I said what's up to all my villagers and of course I cannot forget my best friend. And for some weird reason, I wanted to see if dogs could burn in a campfire. And if you were wondering, yes they can but then i fed him some steak and he loved me once again and i read all your comments and a lot of you guys were getting mad that i wasn't using my netherite so here you guys go i'm starting day 101 smelting my ancient debris just for you guys and everyone was making fun of me for not using bamboo to smelt and trust me i did try using bamboo in the last 100 days but it just smelted way too fast for my liking i always had to replace the bamboo like every couple seconds so it was getting pretty annoying but anyways i started crafting some netherite ingots and i made my first ever netherite chest plate and Hopefully the chest plate will save me from dying from all of these witches. I then used the other ingot for my pickaxe and now I'm looking pretty pro. And then I spent the rest of the night just mining, putting my netherite pickaxe to use. And then these little end ants kept spawning. I don't even know their names, but they're really annoying. And with the end phase, these endermen always spawn and they just teleport across my entire island. And for the record, I've been getting so many comments about my creeper egg and my sheep egg. They spawn in the chests, guys. And if I could spawn in spawn eggs, why would I spawn in a creeper egg and a sheep egg out of all the eggs I could have spawned? And these endermen kept spawning and this guy thought he was sneaky and tried hiding in the long skinny bamboo. Yep, not today, bro. And then the very next Enderman took it a step further. Let's play a quick game of hide and seek. Comment down below if you guys can spot the Enderman. Did you spot the monkey hiding in the trees? And he didn't like how I called him a monkey, so he decided to jump scare me. And I kept hearing some weird noises, and it was because of this shulker just chilling underneath this little stone brick. All these mobs think they're so sneaky, but then I killed them and I got my first shulker shell. Bright and early on day 102, I found another animal living rent free in my house the cat. I then chased him out of my house and I thought he ran off the edge again. And on day 102, I wanted to make an anvil so I can use my mending book, so I decided to smell some iron and kill these iron golems. I made my iron blocks and I made my first anvil. I plopped it down. I threw the mending book with my netherite pickaxe and I renamed the pickaxe. Please subscribe and I'll love you because I actually will love you. Please just click the button. I've been working too hard on these videos. I then went through all of my chests and I collected all the spawn eggs and I got a dolphin egg and a tropical fish egg. And you know what that means. It's time to make my very own Pacific Ocean. I also spent the rest of day 103 cleaning out all the chests and man, that took so long. It was probably the most miserable thing I've ever done. But while I was cleaning out the chests i realized i had two kelp and now i can make a kelp farm so i can start using it to smelt my ores so then i spent day 104 just gathering a whole bunch of blocks and resources so that i can start on my huge aquarium then i'll have a home for my dolphin and my fish and then i'll have a home for my kelp farm and i really need to upgrade my stone generator because i've been mining way too fast i was going like sonic mode after an entire day of mining i ended up getting six stacks and 39 stone which was really good and now i just needed a place for the aquarium and I took a good look at these cows and I'm like, all right, time to start my target practice. You guys have to go. There was just way too many of them. So I started shooting arrows at them and then I let it rain all over them. It was kind of sad to see, but it made up for a cool montage. I then tried doing a 360 and I almost died. I landed on one heart and I just missed the water. So I grabbed a water bucket this time, made my way back up and I tried doing a 360 MLG and... 
I guess I'm not that pro at the game, but I swear I placed the water down, but I was still determined. I went back up with another water bucket and I wanted to redeem myself. I took another leap and I did it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not that pro at the game. And I was too embarrassed to try again, so I just ran away. The very next day on day 105, after I killed many of the cows, I decided to pull them all to one corner so I could make some room for an extension to my island. I trapped them off and these three cows just got separated and they, they did not listen to me. So I sadly had to execute three of them in front of their family. I killed all three, but they didn't really seem to care. Then I started working on the extension, I cleared out the fences and expanded the island even more. Then I changed it up a bit, I wanted the new part of the island to look completely different so I used stone bricks and spruce wood. I then ran out of wood so I spent the next day just mining wood so I can have enough resources to make a huge area. And I spent the entire day just gathering wood because I knew I needed a lot. The next day on day 107, I gathered about 7 stacks of wood and I was ready to start expanding my island. And on day 109, I realized I still didn't have a place for the aquarium and I didn't like where these cows were at. So I decided to move them out the way and I only kept a couple and I killed all the rest because having all these cows were getting really annoying. And I replaced this area with my aquarium. And here's 10 seconds of me building it. I made a pretty big box and it was pretty deep so all the kelp can have enough room to grow and my dolphin will have enough space to swim. I also made this random floor design with the ocean blocks I had. I thought it looked all right and I started filling up the entire place of water. And now I can finally swim in it. It was pretty awesome to have this huge body of water. I then put these shroom lights in all the corners to add some light and I thought it looked pretty good so far. I grabbed all the oceany things I could find in my chests and I started placing them down on the floor. And I was pretty excited to put my dolphin and my fish in the little aquarium so they can finally have a place to swim around and enjoy not living in an egg. I then placed on all of my kelp and I tried putting these sea pickles down and for some reason they take up an entire water block. Like how does it make any sense? It's so small but it takes up an entire water block. I then threw the fish back into the water but they couldn't swim because they were dead. <laughs> but then I went down into the water and I placed my first fish and I loved the colors he had. He was pink and blue and he looked pretty awesome. I then placed down the dolphin and look at him swim around. This was so awesome to see. And then I started swimming around with the dolphin and I just felt like Michael Phelps or something in the Olympics. I just circled around the entire aquarium so fast. I was having so much fun I started drowning myself. But then I watched a dolphin just swim around and he looked so happy just being able to finally swim. And then for some reason I decided to push this desert llama into the water and this was probably his first encounter with water since he always lives in the sand. I then started harvesting my kelp, I broke it down and replanted it so I can get even more kelp and soon enough I had a huge farm. And while I was waiting for the kelp to grow, I realized something. I do not see my dolphin anymore and my fish. I jumped inside, I tried looking for the dolphin, I thought they were hiding in the kelp but I could not find them. This was devastating. I made a sign saying rest in peace whale 2042 to 2042. Though I have no idea why those numbers came up in my head but they did and I guess the dolphin's name was whale. And now the only thing I was left with was this desert llama. Everybody type in rest in peace dolphin and fish in the comments guys. They had a good life of around two minutes. But then I did end up farming a lot of kelp on day 113 and on 114 I cleared out this area for a auto smelter and this was way overdue because I should have made an auto smelter in the first 100 days but I didn't and I also messed up my first auto smelter so I had to make a second one and there it is. I then spent the rest of day 14 getting some more bamboo and some more kelp and now I finally have dried kelp. I don't need to use coal anymore thank god. On day 115 I decided to mine just to pass the time and I killed all these endermen. They tried to collect enough pearls so I can go to the end soon because I knew the end portal was coming. And while I was killing endermen, I accidentally killed my mushroom cow. And this mushroom cow meant a lot to me. The three other cows looked at me with disgust. I was so sad. He fed me for the 100 days. Without him, I wouldn't have been here. So I quickly killed all the endermen and I made him a little memorial site. I put some item frames down. I put the mushroom cow's remains in it. 
and I made him a rest in peace sign. Rest in peace mushroom cow that fed me for 100 days. And without him, without milking his delicious soup, I definitely wouldn't have been here today. On day 116, I decided to mine all my paints away. I spent the entire day mining and thinking about the mushroom cow that I didn't have a name for surprisingly. On day 117, I dedicated this entire time planning on making an iron golem farm. I waited all the way till night and I went to my mob farm and I tried getting some zombies and this was pretty hectic. I was praying a creeper wouldn't have gotten out and luckily they didn't. I was finally able to fill up the hole so no other mobs can escape. I killed all the remaining skeletons and I was just left with four zombies which was perfect because all I needed was one zombie. I then turned around and realized my entire platform is also full of mobs. While being chased by four zombies I had to clear this entire area and try not to die. So I built up and I lit all the mobs up with my arrows. Soon enough almost all of them were dead. I then jumped down to clear out the remaining mobs that were left and with my amazing bow skills I was able to kill all the mobs without even taking a single heart. Then I made sure I lit up the entire area so no other mobs would spawn. I did not want to deal with any creepers and then I took out all the zombies until I was left with only one. And this guy was the chosen one. I blocked him into one block and I ran as fast as I could all the way back to my chest room to find a name tag. I got the name tag I renamed it the Hulk from the Avengers. I thought it would be a pretty cool name for a zombie because the Hulk kind of does look like a zombie. I then made my way back. I built up and I found out that my zombie died. I have no idea how he died. I was pretty upset but I had to redo the entire process. I then did the same exact thing. I took out all the torches. I let all the mobs spawn and I killed every single mob that wasn't a zombie because a zombie is what I needed. And for some reason when I use the bow in Minecraft I feel like Hawkeye or Katniss. I just love using the bow and arrow even though I have an axe and a sword in my inventory as well but what is the fun in using an axe and a sword? A bow is way more fun. I was finally left with two zombies. I killed one and this last one I was praying that he wouldn't die. I quickly jumped down, punched him into the hole, grabbed him in and renamed him. After an extremely intense and hectic night of getting the zombie, I spent day 118 to 121 gathering all my resources to make the iron golem farm and I was all ready. I had three colorful beds, all the blocks I needed and I started building the iron golem farm. I then placed some water in all four corners so it would push the iron golems down into this hole where all the lava would be. I put down the composter where the zombie would sit. I placed on all the beds where the villagers would sit to spawn the actual iron golem. I made them a little nice cozy home. And just like that, the iron golem farm is almost complete. All I needed was the villagers. And the villagers was the most tedious and annoying part of this entire process. Minecraft literally made these villagers as annoying as possible. I swear, these villagers weren't as annoying and hard to deal with before. But the plan was I had to get the villagers from there all the way to my new iron golem farm, all the way up where the beds are at. And this would be a pretty hard process with just boats. So I had an amazing idea to make a water elevator so I can bring them all the way up and just transport them over my entire island and this was a genius plan. My first plan was to transport them with boats across my island and somehow try to get them up some stairs to the beds and that would have been so painful. I then broke all the kelp and for some reason my water elevator was not working. I was pretty sure I built it all correctly. I put soul sand down, I kelp all the way up and it should be working. So I thought it was this glass pane. I broke it. I replaced the soul sand and it just was not working. I was getting frustrated. And then I actually checked the soul sand and my nuthead thought it was soul sand, but it was soul soil. I didn't even know that existed. So I went back to my chest room and I actually got the correct soul sand. And just like that, it was working. Yep, I just have a low IQ. I then had to make a bridge from here all the way to my beds at the iron golem farm and to make it a little bit more interesting i decided to start breezy bridging or moonwalking if you guys don't know what that is it's basically a way to build a bridge without shifting and it's used a lot in bedwars and i know a lot of people can't do it but i've been getting a little better at it so i started practicing in the most dangerous way possible about 50 blocks up in the air and over a skyblock island where i can fall right into the void and die and lose all my items after countless fails and repeats and climbing all the way back up i thought you know what let's just do it on the ground 
And for some reason, I couldn't do it up there, 50 blocks up, but I could do it on normal ground. Maybe it's because I was scared of dying and losing all my items, but I was going hard with these god bridges. And this might not be impressive to a lot of you guys, because I'm sure a lot of people can do this, but I was pretty impressed with myself. So I spent the entire day just god bridging and practicing. This is probably the only pro thing I can do. But after getting distracted for an entire day, I decided to go back to work. It seemed like this villager already volunteered as tribute to become an iron golem worker. So I put him in a boat and I drove him all the way to the beds. And this time I actually did not use any physical abuse to your surprise. Because as you guys know me, I always have to punch the villagers at least once if they don't listen to me. And then I found his little baby villager and I thought it would be a good idea to take him away from his family and use him as an iron golem worker. But the little kid was pretty stubborn and I don't blame him. So I just took a normal villager and I almost killed him. So I jumped off the boat and look at him. Um, are... <laughs> Are you okay? Does your head hurt or anything? Do you want some Advil? Like His entire head's in the ceiling. But I finally got his head unstuck from the ceiling and I threw him into the water stream. And then I tried stealing the little baby villager again for some reason. I broke the boat and he just ran away back to his family. Smart kid, smart kid. They taught him well. Don't take candy from strangers. I finally got another villager up there. And the second I got up, I realized there are three villagers up here somehow. My armorer wanted to escape from his home. I definitely could not let that happen, so I put him in the boat and transported him back to his house. This guy tried illegally crossing the border. So I got him in my cop car and I tried getting him back into the detainment center and he refused. So I had to use my nice words and get him back in. I definitely did not punch him. You saw nothing. I was finally able to get another villager on my boat and let me tell you, this is slow. Like, really slow. And this villager was also being annoying, so I tried getting him back into my boat. And he almost pushed me off into the void. I almost died and lost all my stuff. Jeez, these villagers are so annoying. Like, they think this is a game. Minecraft isn't a game. This is real life. Then I accidentally killed a villager, but luckily no other villagers saw. So I was uh, in the clear. After a really long time, I was able to get one last villager up there. And this was so painful. And to make my pain even worse, the villager just wanted to go even further further away from the iron golem farm like it's already far enough but he decided to just add six more blocks by walking into the opposite direction and finally i have three villagers in the beds then i spent the rest of the night just cleaning up everything and breaking down the bridges and i decided to practice my aim because i saw some mobs all the way at the iron golem farm and my aim was pretty good i'm not gonna lie yeah my aim is pretty good am i right nope but only real gamers will know that hit marker sound that added. Comment down below if you guys recognize that sound. I then spent day 126 creating a roof above the iron golem farm. So once the zombie's in, he won't burn to death. And I added some lights just to make it look prettier. And then I waited all the way till night so I can transport the zombie into the composter. And this was also the hardest part other than moving the villagers. Once it was nighttime, I had a limited amount of time to move the zombie before the sun comes up. Because if it does, he will burn. So I quickly broke him free and let him out. Out. I made him follow me all the way up into the iron golem farm and I had to get him into the composter. And then this iron golem showed up from nowhere. I literally didn't even see him coming and then I checked and my zombie died. The iron golem killed my zombie. I was so upset. And I did what I had to do and I killed the iron golem. I made sure he felt every single arrow too. So I had to do everything again for the third time. I removed all the torches, I grabbed another name tag, and I renamed the name tag to the Hulk from the Avengers version 2. And I was right back to it, doing the same thing. Trying to get one more zombie. I killed all the remaining mobs, there were two creepers chasing me, and I was so scared it was gonna blow up. Then a skeleton shot even closer to me, and I was getting extremely nervous. They all started surrounding me, I ended up killing the spider and the skeleton with my axe. I hit the creeper once, and shot him with an arrow, and then he died. I killed the last remaining creeper, and I lit up the entire area as fast as possible. Then I led the zombie up the stairs before the sun rose, and the zombie is just an idiot and doesn't even know how to walk in a straight line and fell. I was trying to waste no time at all, I had to get him into this composter. I got him trapped and for some reason he didn't fit in the composter. This zombie had like one too many pizzas or something because he just would not fit. He just had too much fat on him or something. I tried everything I could and he just wouldn't go in. I tried pushing him in and he just wouldn't fit. I tried one more time and again and he was just too big. This guy needs like a diet and like a whole workout routine or something. And he escaped and I was trying to get him back into the hole and he knocked me down and I was really nervous he was gonna kill my village. 
villagers here. Luckily, he didn't kill my villagers. I blocked them off so he doesn't have a way to kill them. And with one last attempt, I trapped him in. I opened the trap door and he fell right into the hole. Thank God. That was a really stressful night. I then renamed him and my first iron golem came up to him. And luckily, he could not reach him and it was working perfectly. So now the only thing I had to do was make the collection system. And while I was doing it, I gave myself a heart attack. Thank God I had water there. If I jumped off a little late, I would have been dead and lost all of my tools and my netherite stuff. Then on day 129 to 131, I spent this entire time collecting a whole bunch of stone and a whole bunch of wood because I needed to make this collection system and I wanted to design it and make it look super pretty. After two days, I spent 132 to 135 just making the collection system look a whole lot better. And I really like this glass tube I made so I can see the iron golem just fall down into the lava. I thought it looked pretty cool. I also put a lava bucket down to test to see if my wood would burn because I had logs beside it but surprisingly the logs didn't catch on fire. I thought this would turn into a massive fire and just burn my entire island down but surprisingly it didn't. I then placed down a whole bunch of signs so I can put the lava there and this is where the iron golem will die. I made a little collection system then I opened the hole and now the iron golems can fall into the lava and I got my first ever iron from the iron golem. Now the last thing I had to do was expand the platform so there's a big spawning area for the iron golems. That is what I did all night and this took all the way until sunrise and i finally finished i had torches down so no mobs would spawn and i spent day 136 just afking and watching the iron golem spawn the next morning on day 137 i checked the chest and i had about two stacks of iron ingots let's go i'm not homeless on iron anymore i'm not living on three iron nuggets now the only thing i had to do was to make a staircase all the way down to the collection system and let me tell you building a spiral staircase is probably one of the hardest things to do on minecraft but I did try my best with my limited building skills. And you know it wouldn't be a cookie build without me putting leaves everywhere. Now that I finished the staircase, I wanted to put this little water thingy to make it look cooler instead of just putting leaves on it because that because that was my first plan. I then checked the chest and I have five stacks of iron and I felt like I was Bill Gates out here, man. Oh, do you guys remember the days when I was living off of two iron ingots? Oh, how things have changed and now I'm living off of three stacks of iron. I'm just kidding. I'm just trying to find a reason to make myself feel better for spending like eight hours on this entire iron project. But hey, six stacks of virtual iron in a block game. Now that is called success. But anyways, I turned all the iron I had into iron blocks and I used it as decoration all over the little collection system. And I thought it looked pretty good because it matched the theme of the iron golems, obviously. And I really liked it so far. But I did unfortunately use all my iron blocks and now I'm left with two iron ingots once again. I then gathered even more resources and went right back to building because let me tell you, this iron project takes a lot of resources to build with. And obviously creepers just love trying to sneak up on you and hiding in little corners and i thought he was just gonna blow up right here but luckily i got away in time and ended up killing him the bomb has been diffused i then lit up the entire area so no more creepers would spawn because i did not want them to blow up this entire project and this is what it looked like so far it looked pretty good for an amateur builder and after spending way too long building i realized i'm almost halfway through to day 200 and knew i had to kill the ender dragon soon so i spent day 151 to 152 mining for the end portal and i had a pretty Pretty awesome view to look at as i was mining i saw the big iron golem farm and i was planning to have a huge castle in front of me so soon my island is gonna be looking extremely awesome and a couple blocks later i got this let's go i got the end portal everybody it took long enough but it did end up ruining my entire collection system. So I was kind of butthurt from that. But the good news is the end portal already came with all the ender eyes I needed. I only needed four and the chest after gave me even more ender pearls. So all I had to do was turn them into ender eye and I was ready to light up the portal and go fight the ender dragon. So I started preparing all the items I needed and to be safe, I made some slow falling potions just because I didn't want to die. And like I had nothing to do with those phantom membranes anyways. They were just rotting in my chest so I had to use it for something before it gets all moldy. I then decided to bring my diamond axe instead of my diamond sword because like you guys were flaming me for using a diamond sword the entire day 100. I read all your comments. I know what you guys were saying. But I went to bed for like my second time ever and I said goodbye to all my villagers. They didn't really seem to care so I went to the end portal. I placed on all the eyes of ender and I was ready to go. One last double check and I took the leap of faith. 
and I spawned on this little island, so I quickly built up. I didn't want to waste any time. There's no way the Ender Dragon was knocking me off. Once I got to the main island, I dragged my slow falling potion to be safe, and I started taking out all the crystals around the map. And I literally just can't miss these crystals, man. I have 102% accuracy with this bow and arrow. Nah, I'm just playing. Editing is my best friend. I then start towering up so I can reach the really high crystals that I could not hit with my bow and arrow. And the dragon flew really close to me and I thought he was going to knock me off right here. And once I got to the top, my goofy ass started god bridging for some reason. Probably wasn't the best time to start practicing my god bridging, but hey, at least I didn't fall. And while I was taking all the crystals, the dragon hit me with a headshot with his stinky ass breath. So I built up as far away from the breath as possible because it, man, it is so smelly, it just starts suffocating you. And he hit me again with his breath. I was in a splash zone, man. And this is completely unrelated, but in high school, we had a teacher and he would spit every word he spoke. So we called the front row of deaths the splash zone because, man, it was like a pool party. And as I was hitting the ender dragon, he set me so far up. Like, I've never been this high before. Luckily, I had my slow falling potions and I landed on this pillar. So I started lighting his ass up with my arrows. And the dragon finally came down and I started swinging my axe into his no-no zone. I'm sure he didn't like it. It must be very uncomfortable, which is why he ended up dying. And just like that, we defeated the ender dragon. Let's go, boys. And I was praying I wouldn't lose my ender dragon egg, just like what happened in my 100 days hardcore. I right-clicked it and luckily it didn't fall into the portal. So I stole a torch. I put it underneath the dragon egg and then I collected it. Let's go. We got the dragon egg, guys. And I was pretty excited to use the dragon egg to make some cool memorial, or not memorial, some casing for it, I guess you can say, because those are always fun to make. And for some reason in this video, I was addicted to god bridging because I was doing really, really well. I went like 20, 30 blocks and my max was like five before. So it was pretty fun just practicing. If you guys don't know what this is, go on single player and just grab a whole bunch of blocks and practice doing this and see if you guys can do it because it's harder than you guys think. But if I can do it, you guys can do it as well. I then jumped into the portal and I said, what's up to my villagers again? I showed them the dragon egg, but they just did not care at all. So I just placed the dragon egg here and I was going to make a case for it later. I then decided to name my egg and I named it Shaquille O'Neal Jr. the third. That's a pretty unique unique name i've never heard of it to be honest and i didn't like how this end portal was looking just sitting here so out of place so i spent day 156 to 158 getting materials so i can redesign the end portal area and make it look prettier and you guys know me leaves that's all i need in life and after shaving these trees completely bare, they looked pretty naked, but at least I stole their leaves. That's the most important thing. And I also love using circle stone. I swear I'm stuck in like 2013 building style. Yeah, I'm a boomer. But then I made this little arch or arc over the little water stream and I thought it looked pretty good. Then I made some more spirally staircases that curve and I'm not sure why I caused so much pain for myself because these are so hard to make, but like they are so pretty. I sound so weird saying pretty all the time, but it, 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 yeah, never mind. I'm not even going to try to justify it. And after some redesigning, this is what it looked like so far. It definitely looks way better than before, but it was just a little minor tweak. And I still want to revamp the entire island, but that would take a very long time. But that is for another episode. And then I got prepared to go to the nether because I wanted to fight the wither soon. So I made my first shulker shell and I even brought my trident with me because I really wanted to put it to use. I think I was all ready. I got some ender pearls, my totem of undying, some water buckets and a cauldron, and I was ready to go to the nether. And once I got in, I was so surprised to see what was in the nether i had a whole bunch of iron golems around and even my own villager was here these guys were trying to escape from me or something like i'm a bad owner i then finally used my trident and man this was even better than a bow and arrow i literally felt like thor it was pretty awesome as i was exploring i collected a whole bunch of glowstone because you know glowstone is a beautiful block to build with for light and then after like 30 minutes of searching i found a bastion and this was my first ever time exploring one so i was kind of nervous i've never been inside of one i've never watched any videos of it i don't play 1.16 a lot so this was very new to me so i played everything extremely safe and i had no idea what to even expect to find i knew there were gold blocks in it though but i didn't know what the main treasure was in this area so i just went exploring I did find myself some netherite scraps and some ancient debris, so, I, so I'm guessing that's the best thing you can get here. So I put everything in a shulker shell just to organize my inventory, and I went deeper into the bastion. I was pretty scared to be here. I have no idea what was in here and what would come out of here. Like, for all I know, a devil would pop out and just jump scare me and instantly kill me. I literally have no knowledge of the new mobs in Minecraft. 
But anyways, I kept exploring and I thought the entire bastion came to an end until I found this area. And it seemed like there was an extension, so I kept going. I placed a couple of blocks down and I found this huge area. And I'm guessing this is the middle, so I tried jumping over and I almost fell into the lava. If you couldn't tell, I was kind of panicking a little bit. This was all new to me and I felt like I was in a maze. And every corner I turned, there might be like a jump scare. I then looked in the middle and I saw this one chest and I knew that was where the goodies are at. Because there's no way there's just one chest sitting in the middle with just garbage in it. So I killed these piglins and I went to the chest. I just broke it. I was too scared to stand around. I felt like I was being surrounded just standing in the middle. So I tried being as fast as possible. I then did some more exploring because I was pretty confident there would be another section of this entire bastion but i guess there wasn't so i just started collecting some black stone so i can build it with it later on and during my escape i was met up with three piglins or not piglins three hoglins i'm sorry do they just not look like pigs to you why i don't know should I cut that out? Oh, no, I'll just leave it in. I'm bad at making videos. What am I doing? But anyways, I ran away from these pig these hoglins and I ended up killing them both. Luckily, they didn't do any damage to me because these guys literally launched you and it scares the poop out of me all the time. Once I got out, I started mining some netherite just for some extra blocks to build with. And I found ancient debris. I have no idea how. I was at Y68 and I'm pretty sure it doesn't spawn at this high of a Y, but hey. Free ancient debris, I'm not complaining. And I tried breezy bridging and I fell. Nothing new here. Me just being an idiot. I then made it back to my nether portal and I started mining for some ancient debris. And this was a really long process. But luckily I had the amending enchantment, so I would just mine a whole bunch of quartz and gold. And it kept repairing my pickaxe, so I mined for a really long time. And the villager came back to the good side, but then he just ran right back to the nether and went back to the dark side. I put all of my stuff away, all the goodies I got from the bastion, and I ended up getting 34 ancient debris. I then put it in the furnace to smelt it, and I saw I was running out of coal, so I thought it would be a good time to finally check up on the dried kelp block, and I had enough to make a stack of kelp block. So this will last me a lifetime, I think. Then I waited extremely impatiently, watching every single netherite smelt so I could make netherite tools and armor. And during the meantime, I renamed my second pickaxe. Please like and comment, because you guys should really do that right now. I then made eight netherite ingots, and that was perfect amount for all the tools and armor I needed. I made everything into netherite, and I also didn't like my protection three pants so i re-enchanted it and i got the perfect enchantment and i also had a feather falling four books so i can make some godly boots so i combined unbreaking and feather falling and now i am fully decked out in netherite armor and tools now that is a very satisfying sound to hear. And I mined so much, I even had two extra netherite ingots to spare. I was so decked out, my dog didn't even recognize me. He just refused to look at me like I was a new owner or something. I then spent the rest of day 169, <laughs> funny number, grinding these mobs in order to fix my mending pickaxe. And after a little bit, it was finally fixed, full durability. Man, mending is a blessing. Then I found the skeleton in my shoe collection wardrobe. This guy was trying to steal my air forces, man. I ran inside to make sure that nothing was stolen, and he didn't steal anything. Good boy, skeleton. I also spent the rest of the day just clearing out these chests because they were annoying me, and I did it in the most lazy way possible. I just threw it into the water stream. Work smarter, not harder, guys. On day 170, I wanted to automate some things, so I cleared out my tree farm. I got a whole bunch of redstone, and I started working on it automatically tree farm i haven't built one in a very long time and i'm not that great at redstone so i tried my best so i cleared out all the trees i replaced the dirt with some wood and i expanded the island to make room for the automatic tree farm I then ran out of blocks and I just put stone there. Hopefully nobody notices. If you have OCD, I'm sorry. <laughs> but here's a quick time lapse of me building the redstone contraption. And I wanted to give it a little test. I put a block in the middle and all the pistons activated and pushed the block to the side. And where the dirt is is where the sapling will grow and all the pistons will push the wood over to the side. Then I will have a huge section of pistons here to push all the wood over to this side. And hopefully this all works out because I'm just winging it. I'm not even using a tutorial and I haven't used redstone in a pretty long time so i'm praying it all works i gave it a little test and voila it works just like how i thought it would that is amazing i then decided to put some furnaces down so the wood can't push over that far into that area if you know what i mean i gave it my first go with a sapling and it worked perfectly the wood was being pushed over to the big section and once i got enough trees it was the moment of truth and it worked it pushed all the wood over and i was ready to start AFKing and grinding it after about 10 to 20 minutes of just bone mealing sapling i had this entire section of wood the only downside to this redstone machine is that it doesn't give back my saplings so soon i'm gonna run out of saplings 
Oaklings. And then I got about four stacks of Oak Logs, which is pretty good. I then spent the rest of day 173 just farming everything. I farmed my sugarcane and replanted it so it can regrow. I'm just kidding, guys. I already know there were like 10 of you guys in the comments saying like, oh, Cookie's a noob. He doesn't know what he's doing. But I can't even argue with that because I actually don't even know what I'm doing. I then gave the villagers some carrots so they can make some love. I then threw a stack of carrots over the sleeping villager and it actually ended up pushing him down the bed. And then he looked away from me. The disrespect. On day 174, I realized I didn't even find a nether fortress. I got too distracted with the bastion and mining for netherite. So I gathered a whole bunch of material so I can go find the nether fortress and kill some wither skeletons. And this villager is still alive in the nether. I'm not sure how he hasn't starved yet. And I already went this way and that way and I wanted to go this area because I haven't explored through the lava yet. I went every single direction except through the lava. I then saw these guys standing on the lava and it kind of looked like my girlfriend. A big head and just some hay looking hair. I'm just kidding guys. Don't get mad in the comments. She knows that. But I ran back to my base. I grabbed a saddle and a fishing rod. And while I was running around, I found another strider with a saddle on it already. Do they spawn naturally like that? Or is there like a hero brine in my world or something just riding? striders on his free time like i'm kind of worried i then went for the search for the crimson fungus or the blue version of the crimson fungus i forgot what it's called the warped fungus i think yeah it was and i finally made the warped fungus fishing rod and i went to my girlfriend's sister and i already know there's like 15 of you guys in the comments that are named molly karen commenting about how rude i am don't worry we're a close family and they know i make these jokes and we do it to each other all the time after traveling the atlantic ocean of lava i I finally reached land and I still had no signs of a nether fortress and it's been like an hour. I did end up finding a abandoned nether portal and I looked in this little little corner and I saw a little speck of nether bricks. I can't believe I spotted it. I am so lucky. So I quickly built up to see if it was another fortress and it was. But of course, with my luck, it was literally the smallest fortress ever on Minecraft. Like, what the hell is this? I could literally run the entire fortress in six seconds. I then noticed there was like a window down here. So I jumped down and I found the staircase down and it was so weird. I've never seen anything like this. I literally went three staircases down into the actual fortress. It was kind of cool. It was like hidden under ground i've never seen something like that it reminds me of like a percy jackson book i read when i was like 12 but anyways i started killing these wither skeletons and i mined a bigger area so there's a higher chance of wither skeletons to spawn and hopefully i can grind on them and get enough wither heads for the wither and all i needed was two wither skeleton heads because i already got one from the chests last episode after killing like a million wither skeletons, I had no luck still. So I mined out an even bigger area. Hopefully it'll increase the spawn rates. And I also went to explore the other sections of the nether fortress. And this was a pretty big fortress all hidden underground. I found some more wither skeletons and still no luck. But anyways, can we talk about Percy Jackson a little bit? I'm pretty sure the book was called Labyrinth where they're like underground in a maze. I don't quite remember, but if somebody does, please let me know in the comments if you guys know any Percy Jackson. But then to my surprise, Surprise, I got the wither skeleton head. Finally, it took like 150, I swear. I then cut to the point where I got my second one because I didn't want to bore you guys. I then killed all the remaining wither skeletons and, and I wanted to get out of here so fast. I've been here for way too long. I was so eager to go back home and I started like parkouring and just doing some risky jumps that I probably shouldn't even be doing. I then found another strider. I started bridging and the most intense and scary thing has ever happened to me. I accidentally fell off my bridge and I quickly threw a pearl hoping i would hit the tree but i actually missed and i went to the other side of the island it hit the very bottom of the lava pit and it was taking me so long to swim back up to the surface to me this felt like minutes were going by but i finally got to the surface with about five hearts and i knew i would have burned to death so luckily i had my water bucket and my cauldron wow that was a close one if i died i knew i was like 1500 blocks away from my portal so that would have been so bad i then threw a pearl to get across this huge lava pit and i landed so close to the edge again my luck was just going downhill from here and to test my chances i threw one more pearl and look where i landed one block away from like a 60 block drop right into lava wow i was really playing with life I finally got back to my island and I was never so happy to leave the nether. Oh, wow, that was a terrible ending to my nether journey. I then tried finding my third wither skeleton head on day 181 and I swear I had one. I checked all my chests and I couldn't find it. I was getting kind of worried, but I ended up finding it in my mining chest. And I was just about to spawn the wither. Ah, psych, I'll do that later. I was not ready for that. 
I probably got some of you guys later though. And this pigman was just staring at me for some reason. It looked like he wanted something or I hurt his feelings. Like he just looked upset. Somebody watching hurt his feelings, man. If you did, please apologize in the comments. Hashtag make the piglin happy again. On day 182, I realized I didn't have a chicken farm and I love KFC, so I wanted to make a KFC farm. So I went mining in hopes for a chicken egg. I then got these foxes and I do not like foxes at all, if you guys couldn't tell from the first video. I was gonna kill it, but then he just sacrificed himself and jumped into the polar bear's home for some reason. <laughs> like, bro, why did you just do that? I then continued mining, hoping for a chicken egg because I really wanted my Popeyes and KFC. Let's have a debate, Popeyes or KFC in the comments. I then got a chest and I was hoping for a chicken egg, but I actually got a turtle egg. I did I can't fry a turtle. So I was going to put him back into my aquarium to give some company to my llama that's for some reason still there and didn't even swim out. But I thought he was going to drown again like my dolphin. So I decided to make him his own aquarium. I placed on all the water so the turtle could swim and I was ready to spawn the turtle. And once he was in, he looked pretty excited. Look at him swimming around. I then decided to make a little viewing area so we can all look at the turtle. And I named him George Not Found V2. Now that is a pretty creative name, am I right? Because I lost my first turtle named George and now I he went he, he went missing and now I found him. So he was found. Okay, never mind. I already ruined the joke like 10 seconds ago. Now, bright and early on day 189, I checked my iron chest and I was loaded. So I used all the iron, I made some iron blocks. I was able to make around two stacks and I used all these iron blocks to finish decorating the collection area. I put all these iron blocks everywhere just to match with the theme and I really liked how it turned out. And this is what the collection system looked like when it was all finished. The spiral staircase was finished and all I had to do was finish the walls and the surrounding areas on the top layer, which will probably take me a while. So that will probably be a day 300 type of thing. I then checked my turtle and he was swimming around all happy and he didn't drown yet. So from day 190 to 191, I was determined to get myself a mending book. I wanted to make everything mending all my tools and all my armor. So I kept replacing this lectern over and over for days. Well, about two days. And then I got a curse of binding. Like, wh what? Minecraft? Could you explain what? What? After countless and countless attempts, I decided to farm some carrots so the villagers can make love. I got some more beds so they can breed. And that means I'll have more villagers to work with. And I spent the entire day trying to get the mending book and they all went to bed. So I waited all the way until day 192. With the sun rising, I went down to the villagers and I woke them all up military style, just like last episode. And they actually had two kids somehow i guess nighttime is the special time it's where all the magic happens and then i spent the entire day again trying to get the mending book and it is the worst thing ever you just sit there and keep praying and as i was trying to get the mending book these two villagers were just making love right in front of me like this is not the time bro okay never mind maybe it is the time because i did get the mending book thank god let's go it took me so long so i spent the rest of the day farming some bamboo so i can get some sticks and trade with the other fletchers i got an entire double chest of sticks which is only like two and a half harvests with my bamboo farm which is pretty insane i filled up my shulker box and i started trading as fast as i can to get some emeralds and i was getting excited i was looking at all my tools and my armor thinking i was gonna get mending but then of course this happened the villager lily <laughs> the villager ended up trading the mending to a smite too i don't even know how but he did and i was upset and i started crying in the corner so i had to do what i had to do and i dropped him into the void i was sick of dealing with him and all the villagers didn't really seem to care so they just went to bed so on day 193 i just mined the entire night away and the homeless skeletons are back they are back boys but it was kind of weird because they started making out in front of me and i was like um what do i do this is kind of weird so i decided to join them and i took off my pants and um ran to them yeah i wouldn't question it if i were you then one of the strays killed the other one and he started attacking me but five seconds later he started kissing me too and i was kind of uncomfortable 
I went back to mining and a witch spawned and I was getting flashbacks, man. This was not good. He threw a poison potion at me, but he missed. And this time I was prepared. I was ready. I'm not a caveman anymore. I'm civilized. I can attack him and not die. But I can't do anything about these guys because blazes are just so annoying. They lit up my entire island and I was so worried again. I ran around praying that there wasn't any fires I missed. Day 194 to 196, I spent so long trying to get another mending villager and I finally got it. Wow, that took forever. Ever. and this time i was actually wasting no time at all zero i started trading with the villagers to get emeralds and i got the first mending books and thank you guys for telling me in the comments that i can click spacebar to speed up the trading process because it really helped me i then got eight mending books and that is enough for all of my tools and all of my armor i was really excited i took off my pants and i guess you can say i got a little bit too excited close your eyes kids i then rename my axe subscribe please i rename my shovel please like the video and i rename my sword comment down below sub to cookie because i really need it guys i'm begging i then tested out my sword on the iron golem and it was pretty sick i went to my mob farm and started killing some monster xp and it was working awesome soon enough all my tools were completely fixed and at full durability now i just needed mending on my armor and i renamed my helmet ten dollars for your name to be on here so uh yeah join my membership i guess or my patreon so uh yeah thank you guys then i went to rename my boots and i just need one more level like just one and then i renamed the boots if you're watching i love you because i actually do and you're the best but it wouldn't fit so you're the best i love you thank you guys so much for watching till here but we're not done yet i still have to kill the wither so keep watching i then had all my tools and armor all mendenized i just made it my own word and this donkey wanted to get in the shot so badly and i kept hearing this villager or this trader making this stupid noise it was so annoying so i threatened him with the bow to the head and he kept making the noise so i had to kill him and then i spent day 196 to 198 making my castle because i really wanted to do that before the video ended And you know I had to add some iron blocks because I just had so much laying around and it was my iron farm. So I added these iron blocks and this is the finished product. I think it looks alright. And you know me, it won't be a cookie build without some leaves. I said it and I'll say it again. Leaves are superior guys. I then took out all these torches and I put these lanterns down to spice up the iron golem collection area. And I have some plans for day 300 if you guys want to see that. So let me know in the comments. But I was planning on moving my chest room over to the castle so all my stuff would be over there. And my items will go underground and pop up over where my chest room is in the castle. I also have plans to completely destroy my mob spawner and put it behind the turtle. So everything is in line and everything will be symmetrical. Then I'll remove everything else from the sides and it will look awesome. That will be a huge project so let me know in the comments if you guys want to see that in day 300 and you know i had to make the polar bear dance just one time before the video ends and just before day 199 comes to an end i had one last joke for the loyal fans that are still watching i grabbed a name tag and renamed it my girlfriend and this little zombie started attacking me i killed it and those zombies are basically the karens in my comments trying to stop me from making these jokes so i went back i named one my girlfriend i named the other my girlfriend's sister I also had to add Smelly Monkey just to spice it up a little bit. I went to my cow farm and I renamed them both my girlfriend and my girlfriend's sister. <laughs> Look at them. They fit my entire screen and they got mad and looked away. And don't get mad. I confirmed with them that I'm making these jokes, guys. Bright and early on day 200, I have one last thing to do before the video ends. I needed to kill the wither. I quickly went to the end. I had all my stuff. I placed down the soul sand. I placed down the three wither heads and I forgot one block. Whoops. Totally not on purpose, but you're going to have to stay till day 300 to see me kill the wither. Thank you so much. If you made it here, share the video, subscribe, and I love you guys so much. I'll see you guys next time.